Thanks for calling the Beards and Sundries hotline. You've reached Anthony. Leave a message after the beep. Hello, Beardos. This is Mike, your newest biggest fan. I wanted to talk about the irrational fear topic that was brought up in the last voicemail. So my irrational fear is oversized plants. They really freak me out. I think it's because I've watched the Little Shop of Horror so much as a kid. Uh, shout out to Ellen Green. She's fabulous. Um, and it's an even bigger fear when the plants are growing all over the sides of the building. Absolutely not. Can't handle it. Can't do it. Anyway, hope you all are having a wonderful week. Talk to you later. Bye. And welcome back. Hello. Hello. Welcome back to Season 3, Episode 3 of Beards and Sundries. The Big Plant Edition. Oh, <laughs> Monstera <laughs> all over the side of your house. Mm. That's right, guys. It's time for another fun-filled lunch break here at Beards and Sundries, the shop where three gay men with beards do inventory on a new sundry item in each episode. My name is Jay, and you too would scream daily if you saw this face every morning. <laughs> every Tuesday night when we go to record, I just scream as soon as the screen comes on. <laughs> like 40 minutes before we started, you guys. It's so scary. <laughs> I'm Anthony, and did I accidentally set the oven to broil, leave its door open, and fill it with gasoline before I left for work? Done that twice last week. I'm changing mine right here on the fly. <laughs> and I'm Joe. And did I really close the garage door or did a ninja roll under right before it closed and I didn't see it? That's a real fear I have. And today's episode is Irrational Fears. Oof. Thank you, Shanae. That's right. This week, our beautiful and wonderful Beardo Shanae submitted this super fun sundry item for this week's episode. So we are going to face some fears today. Phobias, fears, and even things you might find silly, there's something here for everyone this week. We even have some fears that you guys submitted, and later on, Anthony has a game that we're going to face head on. Apply directly, directly to, the to the forehead. How about this week's voicemail? Right to the forehead. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Mike is brand new. He's been chatting to me on TikTok, and I think that's where he found us. And, and he's been listening to the newest episodes and then trying to catch up from the beginning smart and i give him credit he's been dedicated so thank the you quality is definitely the same all the way across the board yes definitely you won't be disappointed <laughs> nothing changed <laughs> 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 well mike i for one enjoy giant plants i don't know i find something comforting about them you know i sometimes i think maybe i should just lay down in the backyard and let nature reclaim me Mike, you would have probably have a panic attack in my house with all the plants. Oh, we don't have plants in here. This isn't real. This is plastic. It came from at home. I think I have 32 plants in my house. <laughs> You're going to make him have a plant ache attack. <laughs> uh, uh, don't encourage right. him. Get Joe off. <laughs> <laughs> okay, if you insist. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, touch me. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, well, Joe, can I find some of Jay's leftover Vicodin in aisle four? No, because I took it all. <laughs> well, I mean, in the Sunday. No, but you can find a lamb burger and fries. <laughs> <laughs> But guys, if you're new to the show and you're wondering just what the hell a sundry is, the term comes from an old English word meaning odds and ends. Now, today, it's used mainly in retail to group together items that don't typically have a group of their own. So, as three very irrational gay men with beards, we are using the term to group together the wide range of topics that we cover. Wow. I'm inexplicably terrified of that intro. Good. You should be. It's so scary. <laughs> So this all came to be because of Shanae's um, fear of balloons, as it were, that she uh, <laughs> left us a message about. 
So do we have any other listeners who left their fears we with us, Jay? actually have several fears. And speaking of Shanae's fear of balloons, I actually kind of get that because when I was a kid for New Year's, as a poor family, we used to blow up balloons and then rub them in our hair to get static and, and then we put the them wall. on the wall. Oh, yeah. And I remember doing that once and one of them snapped and it popped my hand really hard and left a mark. And so I kind of have that same like, eh, I don't really like popping balloons. That's the oh. same. I don't like when they pop. That's I just can't. Uh, I don't like it. I'm not bothered by balloons popped or not. Water balloons when they pop is fine because usually oh, it's fuck funny. yeah. Because I'm all wet. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm I'm fine with loud noises if they make me wet. <laughs> My garbage brain keeps screaming with the piss I filled them up with earlier. Mm. Oh God, let's move on. <laughs> <laughs> you heard it here first, folks. So our next message with an irrational fear came from Rio. And Rio was my OG girlfriend back in Kansas. Ooh, is this is this the is head this on from the shoulder? The this is there? the head on the shoulder. Oh. And I was like, bitch. <laughs> <laughs> her name oh. is Rio and she got cock plucked at the fair. <laughs> I literally gave her a cold oh. shoulder. I didn't even kiss her. Oh my god. <laughs> well, Rio, you're not missing out on anything, so. Yeah. Mm. Hopefully this fear has nothing to do with that. <laughs> Ask half of Oklahoma. Ah. It's nothing worth writing home about. No, I'm kidding. She's like, I'm afraid to open up to men now. <laughs> <laughs> it had the opposite effect on Jay. <laughs> yeah, I was like, all men. <laughs> um, anyways, she said, hi guys, love the podcast. So an irrational fear of mine is sharks or other sinister water creatures when swimming in deep or murky water. It doesn't matter if it's not the ocean, even lakes. It Okay. Yeah, I read that right. I'm always waiting for something to touch or bite me. Also, mm. I may be a bad friend because I always swim close to someone to lessen the odds that I get attacked. <laughs> <laughs> and that... Smart. Is what I call smart. Yes, that is smart. Uh, I mean, you're not very likely to get bitten by a shark, but I guess that does make it an irrational fear. I totally agree with the whole scary part of the ocean and murky water, because for how much of space we've explored, we have barely even scratched the surface of the ocean. And there is some freaky shit in the ocean. I, and I don't mess seen, with the ocean. Have you seen how many sharks have been coming way shallow parts of the ocean now lately around people? Mm -hmm. I've actually been wondering about that because I was talking to my friend Kim who lives in Hawaii and they have had a rash of shark attacks in this one very specific part of the island. And I'm wondering if there's something in the ocean that's like affecting their ecosystem that's causing them some sort of food shortage. Maybe. Because normally they wouldn't try to attack people because it's not good um hunting basically we're too difficult we're just we're ornery um <laughs> <laughs> we struggle Ugh. right exactly so this didn't start until the submarine Ooh, they're brazen now they got a taste for it they're like ah that loud noise scared me and now i'm gonna eat you they said were... y'all got any of them billionaires <laughs> i read so <laughs> many sides of both <laughs> like sympathetic for the billionaires and like not sympathetic for them. And I, I finally landed on not sympathetic. They fucked around and they found out. I was sympathetic for the 19 year old. I, yeah, I don't have sympathy for the billionaires. It's one of those things where time has eroded my willingness to be sympathetic for someone who has innately exploited thousands of people, thousands of the working class to make money off of their backs while simultaneously leaving them poor and incapable of paying their own bills. And that's why I don't have sympathy for billionaires. So on a lighter note, uh, <laughs> I also understand her fear because of sharks. And not only that, but even lakes, because several years ago, I was swimming in Lake Eufaula, which is eastern Oklahoma. And we mm -hmm. even skinny dipped because we were drunk out in the middle of the water in the middle Ooh, of the night. Fun. And I think within a week of coming back from that trip, they caught one of the largest snapping turtles in history at that lake. And it Ugh. was massive. It was like the size of a human. And I went, my wee wee could have been taken off. <laughs> so my, my first thought too, your wiener. And it only got his ball. 
and that's the story of how you know that could have saved me a hundred and ten thousand dollars (laughs) but yeah are you still scared well i mean so could universal health care we don't need a snapping turtle for that (laughs) no that's the solution (laughs) okay yeah my bad sorry sorry everybody universal health care they're bringing in the snapping turtle (laughs) get the snapping turtle (laughs) you can either pay for the medical procedure or we got this guy (laughs) <laughs> it'll be horrifically painful but it'll be over really fast it'll be a lot quicker than the three months of chemo what's that oh stupid thing it's like hey it still beats going to the airport <laughs> oh. <laughs> it still beats going to the hospital <sighs> oh good lord still beats going to the urologist <laughs> oh, <God>. yeah <laughs> so bodies of water scary Bottles of water, scary. Next, Dustin, which is the one that we played the game last week of, because oh, I was, Danny, you know, hi. three months late. Yeah, Danny. hey, Danny. God, uh, sorry, Dustin. Jay yeah, sucks. I chuckled <laughs> Thanks, so much Dustin. at that. I would chuckled today whenever I was listening to the episode. And I was like, he, Danny. <laughs> he said, "Hey guys, figured I'd message you this way so you don't lose it." Side eye wink to Jay. Ah! <laughs> Ooh, oh, it's girl. perfect. So my phobia is claustrophobia, which is, of course, fear of closed spaces. More specifically in that phobia, I fear being suffocated to the extremes I cannot have my face covered at all or do anything that will make me feel my own breath on me. Because then my brain will think that I'm not breathing in O2 and I'm suffocating. Yeah, it's fun times. And my mom has literally admitted that I get that fear genetically because she's the exact same way. And then he said, like always, love your content and everything you do. Can't wait for those ad shirts to come out. I'll be buying one for the fragrance gay and for the spice (laughs) caucasity. Literally say that word all the time. So, Joe, (laughs) you started something. Uh, Hey, man, if this is my mark, I leave on the world and so be it. (laughs) I, I can understand having stuff on your face and that being uncomfortable. Um. I granted I sleep in a CPAP every night now, so I don't really care. And you know, what's fun about sleeping with a CPAP is you can literally like mine. Cause it just covers the nose. And then the hose comes out the top of my head. I can literally lay face down on my pillow. Now I can't and still breathe fine because mine covers this part of my face. Yeah. And Anthony has the face hugger model. Yeah. I have to have the face hugger model uh, at night. I, my mouth was coming open and I'd wake up and air would just be jettisoning out of my mouth. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know why, but I just imagine this laser just shooting out of your mouth. And I'm like, that's nothing like what it's supposed to be. But Basically like that. I was like. <laughs> 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 but uh, in the vein of what Dustin is speaking of, I remember distinctly being in basic training and having to get in full mop gear, which is like the gas mask and like the full, like, like all the chemical gear so that you weren't vulnerable to chemical and gas attacks. And that was the first time I ever had a panic attack because of a closed space, because I was absolutely covered head to toe and stuff. My gas mask was on and it was like, a hundred some odd degrees in the summer heat of South Carolina. And it was, ooh, I had a whole moment. Ugh. So claustrophobia only kind of really bothers me. If I have some sort of helmet on my face, I guess. And my right. breath is going in the helmet. And then my, like my screen or my lens starts to fog. That mm. is when claustrophobia, if I feel my breath and can't see anything, then I start getting claustrophobic, but I feel the same way. I was, I've, that's why I've tried snorkeling a couple of times and I just can't, I, I don't, I just don't know if I'm not getting the breathing right or if, if it's not sealing because of my beard, but I've tried snorkeling so many times and every time just the little bit of water gets up in here and then it starts to go to my nose and I freak out and then I got to shoot above the water and I just, I can't snorkel. I just could never figure it out. And, and when I snorkeled. I was fine when it hit my nose, but the moment it started getting in my glasses and I couldn't see well, then suddenly that's when everything went wrong for me. Yeah, we went to Hanauma Bay and we did some snorkeling and I felt really bad for Joe because he was not having as much fun as I I was having. I couldn't figure it out. I just the only thing I can think of is that it wasn't sealing 
on this part because of my beard, and that's when it was letting water in. So that's probably what it was. And did you use did you use the ones that they provided, or did you have your own? We used the ones they provided. Yeah, right. Which was yeah. same here, and I really wish I would have just got my own pair. Uh, I mean, it's kind of a retrospect thing. I guess if we ever go back, um, that's something we can do. But I don't know. It doesn't bother me anymore. Uh, obviously, because I sleep with a full ass face mask on my person at night and i actually like being in small spaces when i'm trying to sleep and get comfortable it helps me be comfortable so anyways danny <laughs> <laughs> yes thanks dustin <laughs> so yeah claustrophobia valid for sure valid for sure. sure uh we got an email from derek and his uh, hi derek Yes, his fear is villains, which for some reason, when I read that, the very first thing that popped in my head was The Incredibles. I'm actually thinking. And I just started like going through of all of the villains. The movie with Bill Skarsgård and the girl from, um, oh gosh, It Follows and Kira Sedgwick. And I can't remember the other guy's name called Villains, where Bill Skarsgård and the girl from It Follows are like, they do like gas station robberies. You need to watch it. Joe, you've seen it. I know you have. I made you watch it. Is it a comedy? It's a dark comedy. Okay. I think I've seen clips of it on TikTok. It's so funny. What's Derek's definition of villains here? I'm sorry to derail it immediately. I should have asked further. I, I'm just assuming like any bad guys in. I could see that. Yeah. I could see it being like an overstated um, antagonist in a storyline. I can see it as like a darker villain, like more gritty, kind of like kind of like the Gotham City universe villains where like they actually kill people and harm property. Not just like the bumbly villains like in Pixar and like, you know, Megamind and all that stuff. Wait a minute. You don't think um, Syndrome killed people and harmed property. Yeah, but like it was a cartoon, so it wasn't scary. Oh, he killed people. There were skeletons on that island. Yeah, but you know, it's true. It wasn't straight mean. up murder. He tried to kill a child. Yeah. So he tried to kill a babysitter. Thank you, Syndrome. Who doesn't though? I mean, look at all, look at Halloween. Oh, that's true. They tried to kill a babysitter. Well, you know what? Michael Myers succeeded where Syndrome failed, and he didn't need special powers. He just Good needed point. a knife. He has special powers. I know the new stuff, yeah. but that's bullshit. He has, because no jackass can run that fast and just appear anywhere without making noise. Yeah, but Lori Strode beat him with a, like, a wire hanger, which is how you also beat certain children. And he was wearing a wig the whole time. <laughs> right. <laughs> if you count... The William Shatner wig attached to the mask. You're not wrong. It wasn't just for the reshoots. <laughs> Anyways. Oh, I love that joke. <laughs> and then we have one more irrational fear that we got from Toad. Oh, oh, hi, Toad. Hi, Toad. Hey, we'll see you in about a month, Toad. Yes. Yay. Joe, you're going to be shocked by this one. He has a fear of Elbow macaroni. <laughs> no way. Where's this come from? I'm a bit more tolerant now for elbow macaroni, but for the longest time, I couldn't eat them unless I split each and every one open before eating to make sure there was nothing inside them. When I was... Okay, I can see that. When I was young, I was eating baked macaroni pasta and bit into one with a baby cockroach inside. <gasps> Squirt. Ew. Oh. <sighs> Okay, Love yeah. you, boys. <laughs> yep, that would 100% do it for me. Completely. I like yep. It almost makes me go, wait a minute. I thought you were going to say something like that like a millisecond before you did, because I've seen story I've seen those terrible, like, scary videos of, like, people that get, like, the bugs stuck in their ear and they have to get them pulled out. And I'm just like, Ugh! Ugh. but yeah, to, I'm to have a little surprise in your pasta. That's not great. I'm a bug person. I don't mind bugs. I hate cockroaches. Well, um, yeah. But I don't mind bugs for the most part. They don't gross me out. But that grosses me out a lot. 
Well, it's because normally I'm just devouring mac and cheese with no thought behind it. And all of a sudden, wait, now I'm going to be like, is there cockroaches in here? Oh. Listeners, tell us if we ruined double macaroni for you. So baked mac and cheese for dinner when we're up there. Got it. So, Toad, when we come visit you guys next month, uh, I'm going to make you my infamous <laughs> instant pot mac and cheese just for you. Be nice and crunchy. Don't worry, you'll we'll use rotini. No, use wagon wheel. <laughs> oh, I'm gonna, wagon wheels are awesome. We'll make bucatini, so there's a lot more space for there to be cockroaches inside of it. Oh my gosh, <laughs> so many just in a conga line. <laughs> there could be in bucatini. You never know. You know, wagon wheels are the superior pasta shape, honestly, because they hold sauce just like an elbow does, nah, and you can see nah, through them, nah. so you can see if nah. there's bugs in them first. Rotini is it. I am a Rotini fan. I use Rotini in a lot of recipes. Rotini, radiatory, anything that has the little flanges on it that you can mm-hmm. get sauce all up in. Mm. Yeah. I agree with you, except for macaroni and cheese. But the thing about macaroni is that like a lot of times the noodle pasta doesn't have – it's smooth, and it shouldn't be smooth. It should be like rough, grooved on the outside so that sauce can adhere to it. And it makes me upset. Wagon wheels have the ridges on the outside like a coin. Yeah, but that doesn't count. I feel like it's we got should got giant have... holes in it. I feel that's like, like we... saying like, oh, like look. An like an macaroni noodle. Like, that's like fisting a bottom. You know what I mean? Like, there's just a lot of space for the sauce to go through. I feel like we should have an episode of Judge <laughs> Jay where we just talk about this. <laughs> We're probably I mean. going to in the future. <laughs> you still have that doily for your neck, right? Yes, I do. <laughs> Literally right here. <laughs> a segment that we planned on doing that we haven't done in over a year. That we've never done. <laughs> Not everything makes it to the pod. Some things end up on the cutting room floor. There's a lot on our cutting room floor. Yeah. And bathroom floors. Ooh. So the noodle itself... No, but what hides beneath the noodle? Yes. Yep. Oh, is that what that movie's about? <laughs> <laughs> what lies beneath? Oh, what lies beneath that layer of broiled cheese on top? All this time I thought it was a horror movie, but really it's just a documentary about it's... macaroni processing. Yeah. Oh, my God. About baked mac and cheese. About why mm. you shouldn't bake your mac and cheese. There's better ways to make it. Stove top is superior. I like baking it if I make a specific recipe that traps the moisture in, or otherwise it just dries it all the fuck out. I yep. hate dried baked mac and cheese. It's not. It's I not, have an uh, irrational fear of dry mac and cheese. Mm, it's not irrational. It's completely rational. Fuck that. Because I actually make a, um, what's it called? I make a chicken parmesan pasta dish in the <gasps> oven that that's good. And as long as you cover it properly, the noodles don't dry out. I made chicken parm pasta last night. Yes, with homemade sauce. Like a casserole? I did. No, I made it on the stovetop. So we had tomatoes that we bought at the farmer's market (gasps) on Saturday. And they were these giant tomatoes, but they were also like ripe on the vine. So they were ripe when we got them. And that meant that they were like on the way out already by the time we got them. (laughs) Yeah, Use it or lose it. Yeah, so I we used one of them to make hamburgers and then also BLTs for me for lunch. Oh, and then yes. we used the other two. Um, I roasted them in the oven with garlic and onion. Uh, you probably mm-hmm. heard Joe complaining about how the onion was, smell was so strong yesterday. Mm-hmm. Because it was. Yep. Um, <laughs> and uh, Italian seasoning, salt and stuff. Uh, and yeah, I turned that into a sauce. And then I kind of cooked it on the stovetop to get some of the liquid out of it because they were very ripe tomatoes. Yes, I heard Joe complaining about that through his microphone on the Xbox. <laughs> Yeah, I know. Well, I, I know. was losing everything I did because I was having a very bad day in GTA. <laughs> no, I'm not having a very good day. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, and uh, yeah, I made uh, some breaded chicken and stuff and served it with rotini. And yeah, it was great. Well, that sounds delicious. Tonight for it dinner. Very good. I made a strawberry cheesecake smoothie. Oh, that sounds awesome. And you know what? It's super duper easy. Really? I literally use oat milk, Greek yogurt, frozen strawberries, a frozen banana, and then um, protein powder. That's it. 
That feels like breakfast. It's yeah, I'm not really hungry right now. I just got on some new medication that it's curbing my appetite. So. So anyways, that was all the user content I got regarding this topic. Uh, do we should we talk about ours? Yeah, let's jump right in. Well, real quick, if we didn't mention your rational fear, it's because we didn't get it in time. So if you still want to send a few in, go ahead. We'll still talk about them next week. Jay overlooked it, and we'll talk about it next year. Or I missed on our it because rational I'm crazy. fears too. Yeah. Episode, <laughs> um, but because it'll take him that long to find it. I did a lot better this week of taking notes, so <laughs> I'm more motivated now on medication. <laughs> Uh, and we'll talk about that next week. Yay! <laughs> so now do you guys want to talk about some of our rational fears? Yeah. Yeah, let's do it. Let's cycle through them like we always do. Yeah. Okay. So let's cycle through. Why don't you go first, Jay? I started with um, public bathrooms. I, I don't know what it is. I have this I subconscious fear of public bathrooms, and I will do everything possible to dodge them. What, what what's legal at least i'm not just gonna like defecate in public but <laughs> come on we're trying to fill the bingo card <laughs> like I, I can't i i i wouldn't understand my fear if i'm like well i'm gonna shit on the street but i won't go to that public bathroom <laughs> so right so anyways yeah i like i i hate public bathrooms when i travel um with people I struggle to go to the bathrooms for probably the first 24 hour. And then my body is just like, you have to go. And so like, I'll finally make myself, but yeah, public bathrooms and me or bathrooms around people that I'm not used to being around is kind of now weird is, to me. Is that still a fear that you have? It still sticks with me. I don't enjoy it. Oh, okay. I'm better about doing it now because I'm just like, you're 33, be a grown ass adult. But do you I'll have any leftover do you have any leftover habits from that fear? I don't like think anything so. residually that you do to try to avoid public bathrooms that you maybe don't consciously think about? You know, I probably eat differently and drink a little differently that I've never fully thought about, but I don't know. Yeah, be interested to find out. I Bring it back too. on the mental health episode. Because I do actually cut back my drinking, I feel like, whenever I'm out and about. Hmm. Not me. All and then, the like, fluids, baby. On the cruise, you know, I, I had my own bathroom. And so that's the only bathroom I'd go to. I would not use any of them on the ship. I will walk anywhere on the ship hmm. to get to my bathroom. I don't think I share the fear to the extent that you do because I work in a retail setting. So I deal with a public restroom every day. Uh, we have a couple of restrooms that are like employees only that I'll go to first, but I mean, like they keep them so clean and I've never really like experienced a nightmare public restroom, I guess. I mean, they've been some that were kind of grody, but I've never really experienced one that's like so disgusting that I would refuse to use it. And I have. typically once I get into a stall and kind of like scope everything out and make sure everything's fine. Once I plop down and like, I'm just like, all right, I'm fine. And I'm in a little closed room. It's my own space. And I'm all right. Once I'm down there, I'll just poop normally. <laughs> <laughs> you better. <laughs> uh, yeah. Ours is the same situation. It's like a public restroom. And honestly, the bathroom itself is clean. But the number of people I hear who are in there pooping, who flush and leave and do not wash their hands is alarming. Oh yeah. I see it. I see it more than I would like to. I hate Ugh. that. And maybe that's it. I don't want to see it. I oh, but at work it's oh. the same way. Like Ugh. people if they don't wash their hands, I'm like, that's it. I think I secretly hate you. I'll do you another one to the public restroom and it's people that answer their phone or watch videos or listen to music on loud Boo. in the bathroom. Boo to you. It is kind of funny, though, whenever I'm like at the urinal and I'll hear someone in a stall and I can hear whoop sending an email. Or you hear the grinder noise and then you get a notification. And I'm like, oh, no, forgot that was on zero feet away. Oh, what are you doing? Under stall action. Frost not bingo square, baby. 
<laughs> somebody walks into the bathroom, people I've worked with for years. I'm like, I'm not gay. <laughs> Uh, that's it that's the irrational fear right there isn't it jay <laughs> everyone's worried i'm gay <laughs> yeah but only in the bathroom just in the bathroom outside of work just in the bathroom yep your local park bathroom <laughs> just uh, like that commercial oh yeah i forgot about that commercial my local 18th floor bathroom <laughs> uh one of my earliest irrational fears that i can think about is I used to be afraid of vampires when I was a kid. <laughs> and I won't call it necessarily irrational because I watch like horror movies and stuff. I still grew I was up on say, horror films. You've gotten over it by now. Oh god, yeah. I I dove in head first. Um but I used to be so afraid of vampires, but I also had this irrational logic as a child because it's child logic, you know, you're 4 or 5 years old, you think things the way you think things and i knew that they would bite your neck so i would cover up to my neck every night i'd make sure it was covered up because i thought if it was covered they couldn't get me like they couldn't like, take the cover off to get like the tooth fairy i just literally yeah. imagine anthony walking around with one of those like little necks <laughs> neckties all the time and he's just like i'm safe they can't see my neck what are those shirt collars called that Fred wears on Scooby-Doo? Like one of those things? Oh, yeah. Yeah. But it was only when I'd go to sleep. Like that was the only time that I would do that. And I'd always cover up like over my neck. And I don't know if you've noticed now, Joe, but I still try to do that as much as possible. It's I do that too, but it's usually for comfort, not really from vampires. It's Maybe comfort it's vampires. and vampires. I'm comfortable with it because of vampires, Joe. I don't know why, but when you talked about covering up, and protecting your neck, it reminded me that for weird reasons as a kid, I realized that I feared sharks were under my bed. Like lone, like lone sharks, where that came card from. sharks. <laughs> as an adult, that's my fear. But as a kid, <laughs> gonna get your knees. <laughs> I don't understand the logic behind my brain. My parents should have known something was wrong with me back then. Sorry, I don't know why. It's the chat it's, piles. That might have been before I played on them. <gasps> There were sharks in Good there. Lord. Oh God. I don't I don't know why that popped in my head, but it just dawned on me. Huh. 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 I didn't it made no sense to me when people were like, I'm afraid of crocodiles under my bed. And I'm like, that's stupid. There might be sharks though. <laughs> <laughs> you fucking idiot. You should be more scared of sharks. I just see you. like four year old Jay, but you still have like the full beard and like your <laughs> your adult face, but just about this tall, and you're just like, Have you heard about the little sharks under your bed? <laughs> For the life of me, I would not dangle my foot off the edge of the bed either. A shark might jump out. Lord. I still don't do that. And I don't know why. I think it's because of a comfort thing. I just, people that don't cover their feet in the bed, just, I don't like that. I think it's I a like human nature thing for the most part. I, I, I think most people are uncomfortable with that. But I don't know. Listeners, let us know. Like, are you uncomfortable with your feet being out of the blanket and like off of the bed? I pull one foot out all the time. Not off the bed. Not oh. off the bed. Just out of the blanket. Off the bed. Off the bed's the one that freaks me out okay. the most. I don't yeah. mind yeah. having my foot out of the blanket. That doesn't bother me so much. I'll pull it from out from under the cover, no problem. But hey, dangling over the bed, no thank you. Mm -mm, no. no thank you. No. Do not like. I think of um, paranormal activity mm. when she's like laying in bed and it, like drags her by her legs slowly out of the bed and then yeah. down the hall. And it was, ugh, ugh, ugh. that's what I think of. And I do not like it. I also worry that Finster will come up and be like, <laughs> I'm like, ah, get <laughs> and out he of here. Will too. <laughs> like, like, yeah, I know. I think of this video from some foreign country years ago that I watched where some lady had her foot dangling out and a python got in her house because it was <gasps> not, not a fancy house in a bitter foot. And I was like, yeah, well, Jesus, can't do that. <laughs> that will surely happen to me in Latham, Kansas. <laughs> in Yukon, Oklahoma. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I just found out that we're getting a 12,000 person outdoor concert venue, a luxury concert venue. I read that today. I saw that actually. Yeah. And my irrational fear is that Oklahoma City is going to contribute to global warming more than they already are with 120 private fire pit suites. Yeah. That what is that me. even about? On a state that has frequent burn bans, 
is experiencing terrible heat waves, you're going to install 120 fire pits in a closed area. I wonder if it's like those really fancy natural gas ones. <laughs> I read an article about it today, and the comments were basically three categories. And it was, this will be great for the area, but I'm glad we moved away because it will be too crowded. Some people said it will be too hot for this, which I agree with. And then the third group said, wow, finally, something other than the zoo amphitheater. And that was basically the three comments that I read over and over again. See, and I keep reading about, well, and it's true because I know exactly where this is going. Did you just toss and a cat away? I did because she keeps la- leaping up in <laughs> my, just... my <laughs> lap. That's the third time. Bye, Blanche. Yeah. That, that's exactly who it is. <laughs> but uh the trap or the roads for where this it's is right across from mustang right yeah it's literally right outside my neighborhood but um not enough traffic there it's, the roads are not designed for that no your roads aren't designed for your neighborhood yet what was your irrational fear joe so my first one is kind of silly but i think i can kind of identify with a few people that listen and mine is stepping in water while wearing socks Ew. Yeah. It's just Ugh. slimy. It, it's you just feel violated. That's a complete and... rational thing. Yuck. Yeah, and I don't like it. We have two, immersion toe. We have two dogs, and one dog is a very tidy water drinker, and the other one is half basset hound. So not very much. So typically I'll be walking into the kitchen from the hallway and I'll see some puddles on the floor of water, and I'm like this fucking asshole and i have to step around them when i'm wearing socks because if i step in water wearing socks i will flip out jake was and i don't wear things on my feet now so problem solved jake was actually the same way with water and so i kept it was basically a mop with just one of the little peel off microfiber mop heads on it and so i would just every practically few minutes as much as he drank i would just go over and just be like wipe 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 (laughs) Because, God. Now, Joe, is this a fear of having your feet be wet while you have something on them or just stepping in a puddle while you have socks on? And I ask that because as a little boy growing up in West Virginia and all the snow, did it bother you to get your feet wet in the snow? No. And so I think this is just like a – I think it's just a fear of with socks on because – I've already got the socks on and I don't want to change them, especially if they're fresh socks. But once you've stepped in water with socks on, they're ruined. You got to, you got to get new ones. So, and just, I hate that. So not the same as like, if you're outside playing in the snow and your feet get wet from the snow. Honestly, I couldn't really tell you because I haven't played in the snow in decades. Well, you're missing out. When point. you were a kid, did it bother you? No, it didn't bother me as a kid because you're going out to play in the snow. So I I never really got bothered going outside in the snow because I was always active while playing in the snow. So I never really got cold because I had good weather gear on. So I never had to, like, worry about the snow getting into my boots or my sleeves or whatever. I can see that. Your parents are well prepared for weather and stuff. So especially up in that area. They both grew up in Massachusetts, so they were well versed in snow already. Yeah, that they had sense. the spirit of Massachusetts, are you saying? <laughs> right. But not the spirit of America. Whereas growing up in Oklahoma, and I'm guessing Kansas, Jay, did you ever have to go outside with uh, socks for gloves? No, we had, I had mittens. I remember I had red mittens and blue mittens. We had to like layer up with socks. That was the layer. So you had That's mittens, cute. but then you had like socks to help you layer up. Well, that's interesting. I didn't ever think of like step because I it doesn't freak me, it doesn't freak me out. It does make me go Ugh, whenever I step in. Yeah, water with I my cringe. Sock. I don't like that. It's yeah. sort of in the same vein as touching wet food in the sink. Mm, that doesn't bother me very much either. But usually, I'm wearing gloves. Yeah. So, <laughs> just, like, just like Dexter's thick mom. <laughs> so, Jay, what's your next one? Um, I put face in water. I do not enjoy my face going underwater at all. Really? I can't stand Me it. either. Um, like I'm even when those... you're swimming. Yep. I'll do it, 
if I have to, but I do not like falling off things or jumping off things or my face goes under. Uh, if I can, I will plug my nose if that has to happen. Um, and even in the shower, I have a little bit of anxiety. I mean, I obviously have to rinse my face, but I have anxiety for years doing that with my face. I know where that one came from, though. Why? If you when don't mind saying on the podcast. I was three. We were on probably our first family vacation, which we went to Missouri. Mm. Whoa. Not Branson. Don't don't think. Oh, I was about to cool. ask if it was Branson. <laughs> I'm pretty positive we went to Bass Pro Shop. Whoa. No fucking way. For vacation? Not, not even shitting you. I'm pretty sure we went to Bass Pro. And I think it was like a one or two day trip. Well, two or three day trip. Sorry, two night maybe. I mean, and Bass Pro is pretty big. So, I mean, it does take a couple of days. I think the biggest thing I remember about that trip is we stopped at a Dunkin' Donuts. And first, amazing donut when I was three. And two, I... My parents bought me a Dunkin' Donut toy truck. Played with that thing for years. It was awesome. Kind of wild to have memories that far back. Yeah, I have weird memories. That's actually one of the good yeah. memories. Of course, the trip didn't have all good memories because... Well, clearly not. motel we were staying at, there was a pool that we were in. And mm. my dad was dunking me back and he's like again again and like i couldn't catch my breath to say no and so he did it and i sucked in a whole bunch of water <gasps> and uh all of a sudden he pulls me up and i'm like choking and all like coughing and then i think i threw up in the water and like everyone is just in the pool watching me suffer and dad's like oops you okay so then i couldn't <laughs> play in the pool anymore well, you were three. I, that, uh, that does make this a very irrational fear because none of this is your fault. Right. No, I, I, at least it's not something stupid. But yeah, it, so now it like makes me not enjoy putting my face underwater. So I felt you... kind of dumb at the lake this weekend or a few weekends ago because I wouldn't tube. And I'm like, I'm tired. I, I've done it enough in my life. I don't need to. But really, my brain's like, I really hate my face underwater. You know what's weird about this is that when I was a kid... I had multiple instances of jumping into pools where I shouldn't and like people having to save me from drowning. I love being underwater. I absolutely love it. I feel, I think it's liberating. I like putting my whole body underwater face and all because it just feels so freeing. I have anxiety thinking about it. I don't like the water <laughs> going in my ears. I don't, I don't like any of it. So, I agree with Jay to an extent where I need to plug my nose because I don't know. I, I know that you have to breathe out. I know that you have to exhale with your nose, but I just, I think in my brain, I just know that like once I exhale through my nose, but if I'm still underwater, that's it. There's no more air. You're underwater. So I always, I just never got the hang of it. I always hold my nose when I go underwater, but I don't mind jumping off of like a diving board or a boat. Or I'll I'll go underwater as long as I can hold my nose and come back up pretty quick. The moment I pull my hands off my nose to swim back up, my anxiety mode. Really? Oh, That's I so hold my nose all the way man. until I breach the surface. I feel so much more relaxed in the water. Like I get in there and I just, it's 100% the opposite. I don't have any qualms. I will get completely under the water and I prefer to be under the water completely than to be out of it even a little. Now, if my face is above water, I love water. I love floating. I love drinking. I love oh, just, yeah. it's yep. so wonderful to me. I want to be in the pool all day. Just don't put my face under water. Huh. Hmm. Interesting. Yeah. Interesting. Uh, I think my adult irrational fear, because I've kind of separated this between childhood and adult, is I don't like taking naps during the day with any door open. I remember this from last week. So, yeah, I want you to elaborate on this now. Like, so I think I've told you about this before, Joe, but what do you mean any door? I don't like doors open. I make sure to, if I don't close the door all the way, I always make sure that it's like as closed as it can. Yeah, be. I don't like even it. to like spare bedrooms. No, any door in the room I'm in. Oh, okay. cannot be open. Okay. 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 So I 
used to. It doesn't happen very often, but it happened more often than not when I would nap during the day. Uh, I used to get sleep paralysis. Oh. Mm. Yeah. And so I would wake up and not be able to move. And when you're having sleep paralysis, and listener, I don't know if you know about this, but more often than not, you see shadowy figures mm-hmm. whenever you're having a sleep paralysis episode. It felt like it happened more frequently when doors were open because I would see the figure in a doorway and then it would come after me from that doorway. So I oh. cannot have that open. I get so it. like, it, like example is if the door is open, I don't know if you notice, but I always face the other wall when I sleep. I never noticed it, but I, I mean, it's true. Yeah. So I just, I don't know. It's one of those things where I, I irrational fear. I guess sort of rational because sleep paralysis is a real thing. It's but, crazy too. Ugh, I never noticed it, but it does make sense. Yeah. I don't like it. Um, I work myself around it now. I don't take naps generally. I try not to, at least. I, if I do, it has to be complete darkness. The only time I've ever dealt with sleep paralysis was once, several about a decade ago. And I didn't see anything, but I heard it and could feel something. Mm-hmm. And it was the weirdest thing. Ugh, I don't like it. I remember, I think my most recent episode of sleep paralysis was something crawled in from the door and it was like this little goblin thing with like ears and it was completely black. So I couldn't actually see it, but that's the impression that I that got. That was Joe coming back from the bathroom. And it like <laughs> crawled up the end of the bed and like onto the bed. And that was when I finally like woke up and you always wake up like, oh, <gasps> like gasping and trying to move. And ugh, ugh. I remember just like, I was sweating when I woke up from mine because I was working so hard to fight movement. Mm-hmm. And mine basically, like, I heard my front door of my apartment slam open and something stomp through into my bedroom. And then all of a sudden, it, I heard it stop at the foot of my bed. And then all of a sudden, it felt like somebody was slowly laying this heavy blanket over me. And yep. from my feet, it just felt like I was sinking further in bed. And right up until it got to my chest, and I was just so aggressively trying to move. And I finally busted it. And I just. Everything felt fine. I got up, checked to make sure my front door was closed and locked, and ugh, I still have chills thinking about that. I didn't think about it at the time, but Joe, do you remember when we lived in Stillwater in that apartment? And yeah. you woke me up one night and you're like, what? Because I was saying Joe, like whispering it in my sleep. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I remember that. That was a sleep paralysis episode because I was like, I fully thought that there were like something was going on and like people were breaking into the front of the apartment and things were like floating there. And I remember you woke me up because you were like, what? And I was like, I was just laying there like, (laughs) and in my dreams, I was trying to scream Joe, but I couldn't scream. And so I was like, Joe, (laughs) and apparently I was actually saying it instead of (laughs) you were, you weren't just whispering. In retrospect, I mean, I was trying to save you, so you're fucking welcome. (laughs) Thank you so much. You ain't just whispering Dixie. Next time, just let the climate change take me. Oh, Lord. (laughs) Well, Joe, what's another one of your irrational fears? Okay, so then my next irrational fear is uh, logging trucks. You know, those trucks that transport (laughs) logs on the highway. And I this wasn't submitted... But I did come across this on Facebook from one of our beardos, Colby. He shared this meme that was like the it was like police officer. Do you know why I pulled you over? You were speeding. And it's me. Me. Of course I was speeding. I was getting past that log truck. Have you never seen the 2003 film Final Destination 2? (laughs) (laughs) So, okay, I used to have the DVD for Final Destination 2 where it gave you behind the scenes looks at some scenes. And when they filmed the infamous scene where the logs fall off the trailer and bounce along the highway and kill everyone, they tried it several takes with actual logs. And spoiler alert, huge logs don't bounce. They fall off the trailer and they just roll away harmlessly. I think that's movie magic. So they won't bounce up and spear you through your car. But still, I mean, and also, logging trucks don't use chains that can snap. They use these big metal bars that go along the side of the truck trailer. 
I hope you've seen these on the highway. So they are super duper safe. They're not gonna bust, and they're not gonna they're not gonna bust, and they're not going <laughs> not, to bounce not, along not. the highway and kill you. But still, in the back of my mind, whenever I pass a logging truck, I'm just like, nope, gotta get past this guy real quick, and I I go as fast as I can to get around him. I'm the same way. I feel that. I I think that movie ruined an entire generation. Yep, I'm the same way. I don't like it. I'm kind of the same way with semis in general because even closed semis i don't know what's in there and i know that that is paper thin metal on the side it's just covering it Mm -hmm. so if something falls it's going to roll right through it and uh if it's big and heavy at least and also their Mm -hmm. tires are very damaging when they blow so i just yes they are i don't want to be next to it there's so much weight on them yeah yeah i i I'm going to just say, yes, I agree with this one. You're absolutely right to have that fear, even though part of it is irrational. Part of it is still a little rational. Still, yeah, yeah, I support it. Yeah, it's fear of the unknown. And so with what you discussed where we'd have the first two being irrational and our last being rational, I didn't know that. I want to claim my face and water as my rational one because this next one's not rational. Oh, okay. Okay. Well, I mean, I think you're sorry. wrong, but whatever. I should have gone in order. Let's decide. <laughs> no, it's your, it's your fear. You get to decide whether it's rational I know or this not. next one is not rational, because when Joe talked about Final Destination, I also have a Final Destination fear, and it is okay. tanning beds. <gasps> was that also two? Or is that one? That was, that was three. The one with the roller is coaster. Three? I believe so. Oh, shit. Yes. Yeah. And I know it won't work that way. I know that's not what's going to happen. But I hate tanning beds. I just, I imagine that scene and I imagine how terrible that would feel. And I can't do it. But yeah, you're right. It's irrational because I'm just like, it would never happen that way. Like it couldn't get yeah. that hot. No, there's there no are so many way. safeguards in place. The machines physically can't get that hot. No. But then whatever that thing was that fell over both the tanning beds. The shell. The oh, in, yeah. That the was shelf. the most. That's what it was. I was like, that's the most unrealistic part of this, aside from like the actual heat the tanning beds get to. And that's also the part that makes me go, ew, I could get trapped somewhere. So no shelves for me. Well, that also plays <laughs> into claustrophobia because they couldn't get out because they were in a tight space. Mm. Yep. And so it, it makes me cringe and I hate it. And thankfully, I'm a ginger with pale skin that's very sensitive. So I can just tell people that I'm like, have you never not been safe for me. in a tanning bed before? Mm-mm. I haven't. I have. They have little fans at the top that you can turn on mm-hmm. to keep you cool while you're in there. I had to do I've like really them. short stints. <laughs> a minute. <laughs> uh, you'd be surprised. Like, I think like three to four minutes at certain yeah, I, points where I was I just think... like, I, I had to like really rein it in. When I asked about it years ago, they're like, I don't even know if I'd do five minutes for you. And I'm like, what a waste. I'm not going to pay this money for this. <laughs> just go outside. I'll just be a pale ass bitch. Uh, I, ooh, I, I, I guess I didn't think too hard on my completely rational fear before we jumped on here. Uh, I actually have severe social anxiety in public places surrounded by a lot of people that is one fear that i get that is it may be irrational in some ways but in other ways it's entirely rational i go to walmart and if the aisles are crowded even just with stuff and not necessarily with people if there's any other people there i get stressed and i don't I experience fear in a di- different capacity. It manifests as severe anxiety. Mm-hmm. See, here, here, in, here in Oklahoma City, we have Crest, which has super wide aisles. They're wide. And I think my problem is, is I just get this annoyance that so many people can manage to block the most wide aisles I've ever seen. And I'm like, in- how? How do you not have enough social awareness to not be so fucking self-involved. <laughs> I don't like people for lots of reasons. But yeah, I get severe social anxiety there, and that is a huge fear I have. And Joe knows because I'll start shutting down in those places. Um, I don't I don't get it super bad at a grocery store setting or maybe like even a mall, but 
in like a crowded venue, uh, there's kind of the fear of like if there's like a stampede or a trampling situation or um, I've been getting a lot more anxiety about gun violence lately, especially reading the news. But there's so many stories of like the reality in this country now is the whole mindset of it could never happen here is out the window because oh, it happens point, here all the time. It's it, happened everywhere. It mostly happens yeah. here. So anytime we go to like a crowded store or like when we went to visit you the last time, Jay, and we went to the outlet malls in Oklahoma city, I kind of caught myself like looking around and kind of being a little more heightened awareness because I didn't know if someone was going to take out a gun and start shooting because it's an open space. There are a lot of people and it can happen in the blink of an eye. So I caught myself looking around a lot more than I usually do, especially nowadays. I do catch myself pointing out in my mind exits more than I used to. Yeah. I've always kind of been that way. I clock my exits and stuff like that usually, but I think that might be the social anxiety in me. I, I feel like I did okay at mapping where I was. So I knew how to get out. But I always knew how to get out the way I came rather than any direction. I, can, I will say something I've noticed that I do differently in that vein is when I start getting that type of nervous in crowded social situations, is I start clocking things I could use for weapons and cover. That <laughs> That is interesting. I do start clocking ways that I could at least protect myself. Yeah. Like Life if America, I have folks, if I have to hide somewhere, is that a safe spot? There's, I don't know if you guys have done it for your jobs, but my job, we've had training on it. And it's the new, the new standard is called run, hide, fight. You run if you can, if you can't run, you hide somewhere you can hide. And if you have to be prepared to fight with whatever you can find around you. And, and it's now like the new industry standard across the line. I've seen our company's gone through a lot of stuff for those kind of situations. Hmm. I wonder about that with where I work too, because we have some blue collar personnel and not to prejudge them by any means, but I've talked to some of them that were very burnt out, disgruntled, disgruntled slash gun enthusiast. And one of them recently got fired for safety violations and it really made me like, I was like, ha ha at first. And I was like, oh, wait, that person I know is at least claim to be one of these people who has like guns and I want to be a survivalist and whatnot. What happens if he's just disgruntled and feels at the end of his rope and shows up and is like, here's the way I want to go. That's another reason why I've given up on management. I don't I don't want to be at the end of a gun for firing yeah. somebody. Yeah. What a true rational thought in this country. Yep. Anyways, Joe, do you want to polish us off with your rational fear before we go to yeah. commercial? And I'll do kind of a combination where I bring it from my childhood. Um, it's not really trauma, but it's kind of a fear that I had since I was a kid. And it's just the dark. Um, when I was a kid, I was just always afraid of like, what might be lurking and what's, what's out there that I can't see. There's monsters or whatever. So I had a nightlight growing up and, um, it's probably that nightlight plus genetics, which made me have poor eyesight now because nightlights can contribute to nearsightedness. If you guys didn't know, hmm. but, um, yeah, it's just I never liked the dark growing up when I was a kid. I was just if we were like camping or anywhere that didn't have lights, I was just like scared of what might be out there. I I've kind of reined it in a lot more now as an adult because I I just know there's not really much out there and especially if I'm sleeping, I really like the place to be pitch black because I don't if it's if there's any kind of light shining in, that's all I can focus on and I can't sleep very well. I was going to say, it's a good thing you've gotten over that because our room is um, pretty fucking dark at night. <laughs> and I like it. <laughs> I remember sleeping with a nightlight when I was a kid. And then I finally, finally broke free of it. And I was like, I'm a big kid. And then I watched that movie. Oh, God. What was that? The Craft? Shut up. <laughs> I saw that wig and I was like, ah. Oh, Robin Tunney. Oh. Um, so cringe. Oh, God. It. 
Blair Witch Project. Oh, in 1999, when you were all of 10 years old. I was nine in 99. Were you? Yeah, because I turned 10 in December of 99. (gasps) Oh, that's right. Okay, okay. And uh, so that movie I, was scary back then because everyone yes, thought it was real. I, finally, I thought it was scary and I was older than you. I finally broke free of my nightlight and then I watched that and we'd thrown it away. And so I had to go get our camping lantern and use that for a while. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> because it was a battery one. And so like we kept having to have new batteries because I kept... <laughs> I oddly can't remember using a nightlight. I'm sure I did when I was really young, but like even as young as five years old, I remember the light from the arc sodiums outside of my bedroom was sufficient because it would like come in through the bedroom at our house in Tulsa. And that was it. I didn't need a nightlight. So I don't know. That's we lived in the middle of nowhere, so my room did not have any light. It was pitch yeah. black out there. Yeah. We were up on the top of a hill in Westover, West Virginia, and we had no light up there. And that's very different because you also don't get the noise that you get from a place like, even at that point in time, Tulsa, like, what, 1989? Um, when I was five and, like, yeah, I. Uh, so I get it. It's just... I don't know. I just never recall using a nightlight. Glug, glug. <laughs> Anyways. <laughs> we should probably move on to a commercial. I what think do you guys think? I think rationally, it's time to move on to a commercial. Yes. And now, for a word from our sponsor, Sinead's Ragtime Saloon and Self-Playing Piano Museum. Hi there, listeners. My name is Richard N. Butt of the local Butt family, famous for our Butt brand player pianos we've been building since 1841. But the locals just call me Dick. Shanae can't be here right now because she's serving a customer upstairs in a private room. Thanks to Shanae, who was wildly upside down on this saloon mortgage and would do anything to save herself regardless of her terrible fear of self-playing pianos, we were able to partner with her and create the infamous Shanae's Ragtime Saloon and Player Piano Museum. You can come on down here and sulk over a woman drinking the finest of cheap whiskeys and pay 25 cents for a good ravage up in the private rooms. All while being serenaded by our 15 different player pianos playing 15 different songs at once. You'll think, wow, I didn't know I could feel worse than I do after drinking this much cheap whiskey. And we host a ragtime bingo every Friday. Let's get some customer feedback. I just can't believe how much I hate myself for being here. I like rubbing my nipples on the piano keys. Wow, that was different. So come on down to Sinead's Ragtime Saloon and Player Piano Museum. You'll hoot and holler with me, Dick and Butt and Sinead. Hey guys, make sure you follow and subscribe to our podcast so you can receive a notification every Sunday when a new episode drops. I'm really glad that Shanae left that voicemail telling her irrational fear a couple weeks ago because I'm proud that she was able to conquer her fear and start this business. In Branson, Missouri, of all places. Wow. (laughs) (laughs) And in the words of Shanae herself, ah! (laughs) That's a scream of excitement. Exactly. I'm here you can get an old-fashioned an old fashioned and an old fashioned player piano. <laughs> mm. And a rusty trombone to boot. So Ooh. steamy. <laughs> <laughs> the only place you can get all those. Mm, I was going to say all place. three, and I was like, wait, that's four. <laughs> <laughs> I, I just imagine walking in there and they're all playing at once, just different songs. And I'm like, what the hell? <laughs> oh, couldn't you? Oh, my God. The discord of that. I kind of want to do that now. How much does the player piano cost? I don't know. Too much. <laughs> <laughs> right. So, Shanae, thank you again for the wonderful contribution to our commercial repertoire. 
But does to this entire episode? But does anybody have something to check out this week? Jay does. Oh yeah, I do have something to check out. I forgot it was my <laughs> turn. Sorry. <laughs> so. Um, I actually found this show several years ago, and I don't remember if we've used it as something to check out, but fuck it, we'll use it again. If you go on Netflix and look up the show Crazy Ex-Girlfriend, it is probably one of my absolute favorite shows out there. It's good. It is the idea that it... Okay, so what really got me on it after watching it for a while is it focuses on a very healthy relationship with mental health, even though she doesn't have it for a while. So right. it's great at just bringing out the norm of mental health while on top of it, each episode has custom written songs. And so they're yeah. themed around things, but written specifically for the show. And of course, one of my favorite is let's generalize about men. Oh, I Such love that song. A bop. Yes. So good. That one and cold water where they're talking about how, you don't have hot water and cold water is like crack. It'll get everyone addicted to things. It's so stupid. I um, love Settle for Me. Ooh, what that's a great, a great song. one. It's so well composed. It's so Broadway, too, like classic Broadway. Yes. And also Love Triangle. Ooh, yeah. <sighs> I like There's the uh, I'm one. So Good at Yoga. I love <laughs> that one. I was just thinking of that. Yeah, that's it's it's such a fun show. And so it, it brings a little bit light heart to the idea, the concept of struggling with mental health and then being diagnosed over the seasons and all that stuff while having a lot of humor, a lot of fun. I'm a big fan of Donna, her best friend who sings yes. wonderfully. Yeah. I also, I never think about this because I haven't finished the show, but I'm guessing she continues going to her therapist who like peels back these layers over time. It takes a lot but yes. Yeah, that's it's such an interesting concept. And the therapist also has a gorgeous voice because she gets a few songs in the show. And she does one where she's kind of like at a speakeasy in the 40s and she's in this 1940s dress and she's singing about how this time it's going to be different now that she's coming back to her yet again. And she's like, I'm going to get through to her this time. And it's such a kind of emotional good song, but it's funny. Mm. worth it i mean the whole show can get emotional at points but also it is just overarching funny yeah yeah it's so season clever th season three got a little heavy for me but necessary <laughs> i had to get past the initial couple of episodes because i guess in my brain i couldn't wrap myself around the satirical quality of the show oh yeah and I was taking it a little too literally. And once I got there, I got there and I could appreciate it. I think it comes from your kind of not so irrational fear of secondhand embarrassment. Like I just, I noticed that you kind of don't like shows that kind of do that. I can't do it. I have a really tough time with it. Yeah. Good on you for noticing because I, I don't like it. So yeah, check it out. Check it out. But Jay, so we've done some Irrational Fears submitted by our Beardos. Is there anything else they've submitted this week? I did actually have a couple other user content items, and one of them I'm going to... It's technically a, a game we used to play, but it's so quick that I'm just going to throw it out there. And it's Mike. He's been going back through our original episodes, and so he brought out three checkout items for us <gasps> to raise our eyebrows at. Bring it to ring it. Bring it to ring it. it. To ring it. Throw it so, wow. I know. I was like, oh, shit. I can't believe okay. I forgot about these. Okay. Boys, glasses Ready. off. So his items are a personal neck massager. Okay. A three set of hand towels. Okay. <laughs> and a pack of Virginia Slims. <laughs> ah, ah. Uh, Which uh, I didn't raise my uh, eyebrows on those, but I like kind of like mm, I did a couple okay. of eyebrows up at some point. Uh, both I, of them were up at some point, even if it was different times. So I'm going to give you both that's true. Mine. I guess one went up because I'm like, I know what you're doing. And yeah. that I'll, give you one. I'll give I'm you gonna one. I'll give you two. You can have both of mine. 
So four out of six. Nice. Mike, you can have both of mine. Mike, I cut off my eyebrows. No, I'm kidding. Virginia Slims. What a throwback. Which is funny because right. Virginia Slims is always my joking cigarette to go to when I make any comment about cigarettes. So I like that we have that in common. I vividly remember at the supermarket growing up at the Shop and Save in Westover, um, the dividers between each order. I remember there were Virginia Slims ads on those. I just I don't know why I remember that so vividly, but they were Virginia Slims advertisements. I, you know, I remember several of the old women where I came from that had the cigarette purse and clip it open and would pull out their Virginia Slims. I was thinking of Marlboro's because that's what everybody smoked in my hometown. But what the fuck was that cigarette that you could bite down on the butt? And it had a little menthol thing in there. Oh, yeah. Or you could also just pinch it. Because when I got, like, really drunk at the Stonewall, I would smoke those with friends because they always had them. And it was supposed to give you, like, this fresh menthol whenever you first smoked it. Yeah. Yeah, and I loved it because I liked the menthol portion of it. I remember when I was a server... Those came out and like all the servers were like, these are so cool. Look, try this. And they'd be like, <sighs> oh, <laughs> ooh, menthol, which I never did it. But I just I thought that was kind of interesting. It was the it was the Marlboro Ice Blast. That's what it was. Yes. Thank they you. They were in a black container with the blue Marlboro logo on uh-huh. it. That's, I remember you, seeing those. And, now. and that was the whole thing. Like you either bite down or you press down and you get the little like menthol thing mm-hmm. in there. Yeah. Yeah. Hmm. I'm so thankful I never got into smoking. Eh, it was never my thing. It was just... Anyways. uh... Anyways, we also got one more message from Michael, a listener. And he was actually just telling us that he bought a pretty fun game from Target that's made in Tulsa. Really? It's called Minding the Gap. Really? What is that? It's hilarious. It includes cards from four different generations. Boomer, Gen X, Millennial, and Gen Z. And you have we to. We wouldn't know anything about that. Right? We and complain too much. You, that's true. <laughs> Speaking of that, while you're looking that up, uh, somebody finally commented on one of our Boomer videos this week and said that maps aren't hackable. And my reply to that was, I'm not really worried about anybody on the Boomer side knowing how to use a computer to hack our side. So, Zoom. game on. <laughs> oh, man. So, I'm looking at this game box art and it shows the four generations for boomer it has the silhouette of someone doing a disco pose with an afro for gen x it's showing this girl wearing grunge so she has like a red and black plaid flannel tied around her waist and ripped jeans and like a short sleeve black shirt for the millennial it's showing our friend matt basically but it's a (laughs) a bald guy with glasses a beard and a rolled up denim shirt And then for Gen Z, it's showing this girl with her hands behind her back, but she's wearing like toms and leggings and a tank top and she has a beret on. So I, I guess they kind of got, they kind of nailed that, I think. And then also when you open it, the each generation's cards are in separate boxes and I'm trying to. Oh, ah, there we go. yeah. And so uh, Gen Z's is in an iPhone. Millennials is in an iPod. Gen X is in a tape deck. And then Boomers is in like a Pink Floyd LP. I, something like that. I can't really tell from an this picture, album but... of some sort. Yeah. So it looks pretty fun. So he was recommending that to us and he was excited to find out it was made in Tulsa. Actually, I that's awesome. Was made I here. totally play this, yeah. I know, I for sure. Thanks, Michael. Thanks, Mike. Thank you, Michael. I'm totally down with this. Anyways, I, is there any other Beardo Smith content? <laughs> technically, when Dustin sent his email, um, he also attacked, attached a picture so we could see what our other Beardos are like. And I'm attaching the picture and already got approval for... Oh. So there is Dustin. Not Danny, oh, Dustin. Oh. <laughs> Hi, Dustin. Hi, Dustin. Oh, so, oh I so, love the chest hair. He's Thank definitely you. a beardo. Yeah, so thanks for submitting pictures. Guys, if you want your pictures in it, send it and let us know that it's okay. And he's got a ginger beard, too, which is also A+. plus. Welcome to the Ginger Club. Do you have a CPAP, too? Thank you. <laughs> That's a great question. Dustin, do you have a CPAP? 
Well, that was a great round of Beardo submitted sundries for this episode, but do you guys think it's game time? Ooh, I, I think do. it is game time. Anthony, you've got the game this week, don't you? I do. And now, for a game I'm calling Inaccurate Fears. So, I have a list of 15 fears. All of these fears are real, but you two have to decide whether or not the phobia that I have named is the correct name for said phobia. Oh, no. Okay. So just keep in mind, the name of the phobia may not be real, but the phobia itself is. Okay. Okay. All right. Are you guys ready? Ready. Uh, As ready as I'll ever be. Phobia number one. Phobophobia. The fear of fears. That's true. That seems accurate. That is accurate. It is the fear of fears. Moving on to number two, a little bit more relevant to Sinead's phobia. Globophobia. The fear of balloons. That's false. I think that's false. It is, in fact, true. Globophobia really? is the fear of balloons. Yes. Well, sh- now you know. Shanae. I thought it was going to be the fear of globes. <laughs> uh, okay. Number three. Number three. Fomophobia. Fear of being without your mobile device or mobile connectivity. I think that one's false. I think that's false, too. I think that's called something else. You are both correct. It is called something else. Giving you just one guess a piece real quick. Do you have any idea what it might actually be called? Um, Hooker phobia. I can't think of anything at all. Yeah, no, (laughs) I knew it. Clearly. Um, Celiophobia? No, it is actually called nomophobia instead of fomophobia. Oh. Nomophobia is the fear of being without your mobile device or mobile connectivity. I thought that was just... It just sounds like you're saying no more phobia. I thought that was just a special dust that you sprinkle on yourself. You're not scared anymore. No more phobia. (laughs) Well, I guess it would meant like no mobile phobia. I don't know, but it's wild, right? I don't know. I kind of want to hear Jay say it in like a transcontinental advertising voice. (laughs) No more phobia. (laughs) Wait, I do the transatlantic accents around here. No more phobia. No more phobia. That's right. With the all new mobile phobia. (laughs) His is better than mine. Thank you. Mine's I like, do some mine's like okay. white trash transatlantic. <laughs> white white trash Atlantic. That's right. With your brand new nomophobia, you too could be without your cellular device and have a panic attack. Now head on down to Shanae's Ragtime Bar and <laughs> self-playing piano museum. I forgot what it was already. <laughs> and if you, like Shanae, hate self-playing pianos, you can use your all-new ball-peen hammer. That's right, with the all-new ball-peen hammer. <laughs> uh, okay, number four. Decidophobia. The fear of making decisions. That's true. I think so, yes. Yes, that is decidophobia. Okay, number five. Ochophobia, the fear of the number eight. That's sure. That's true. Not the name for it. So Jay says true. Joe says false. Sure. Yeah. Joe, you are correct. It is actually yeah, you're octophobia. Oh, I <laughs> feel yes. like an idiot. I should have known that. But what and if I'm afraid a- of octopi? Well, I don't know. I, I, I don't know. I didn't look that one up. Um. Okay. Number six, omphalophobia, fear of belly buttons. True. That's true. Yes, that is true. Omphalophobia is the fear of belly buttons. Such a crazy name. I didn't think you'd make it up. I, that, that was it. I was like, he's not tricking <laughs> us with this. We're all just like, huh? <laughs> I don't know. Some of these, you, okay, we'll see. Uh, <laughs> Euphalophobia, the fear of Lake Euphala. <laughs> 
<laughs> <laughs> okay. Ombrophobia, the fear of rain. False. I think that's true. It is, in fact, true. Yes. Ombrophobia is the fear of rain. All right. There's an audio delay. Shut the fuck up. <laughs> Yeah, there's a doesn't, delay too. That, the only thing it changes is how soon you were wrong. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think I think at the delay it it makes it it muddles up what you're saying. Uh, and, and I no, it no, right. it doesn't. Shut the fuck up. <laughs> <laughs> the only thing you're muddling is meant for your mojito. <laughs> God. Anyways, okay. Next one. Hormonophobia, the fear of adolescence, not of becoming an as- adolescent, but the fear of adolescence, as in as people, as people. Yes, I think it's false. False. You are both right. It is actually called a febophobia. I thought you were going to say fear of pregnant women. <laughs> <laughs> oh god right? no it's called like a febophobia. Through public. <laughs> no so just to be clear every single one of these fears that i list off is the actual the definition is right the name of the phobia may in fact be wrong that's right it's this audio delay yeah i get it shut the fuck up <laughs> okay next one trypophobia fear of repeating patterns of holes that's true. That's true. It is, in fact, true. I've seen so many yeah. articles about yeah. it. I And I that hate is, them all. That's one that I feel like I have because I hate. Oh, I totally have it. I don't like lotus pods. I don't like. Ooh, I think I, like I think it. that's actually what my boyfriend's is because he doesn't like beehives or anything like mm-hmm. that. Yep. I don't either. Same thing. Yep. Okay. Next one. Vestophobia. Fear of clothing. I'm going to say false. false. I think it's called something else. That is, in fact, true. Vestophobia Damn it. is the fear of clothes. It's going to be underwear phobia. Panties know, phobia. Right? No, Anthony has that. <laughs> I, I don't wear underwear most of the time. I'm not wearing it right now. Thank God. And um, we get a million more views. Anyways, <laughs> which actually would bring us to our next phobia. Banana phobia. The fear <laughs> of bananas. I'm going to say no. Mm. I feel like it has to have a more creative. It's name. so silly. Whatever. True. <laughs> it's it's fucking true. Banana <laughs> phobia is the fear <laughs> of bananas. Who <laughs> came up with that one? I don't know. I, I just, didn't look it up. I, I just feel like they go all scientific and they're just like, I don't know. Yellow thumbs phobia. Like, pot- it should have been like potassophobia. So but, funny yeah. enough. That you say yellow something, xanthophobia with a Z is the fear of yellow. See, it's not on here, but it was going to be on here, and I changed it out for something else. That's oddly scientific. Weird, right? Uh, okay, we're down to the last three, and I will not win. Laborophobia. Uh, you might. I don't know. Mm. Laborophobia, the fear of work. True. True. That's false. It's actually called ergophobia. That's not Mm. the fear of office chairs? I know, right? You'd think so. (laughs) The fear of good posture? The fear of better keyboards to prevent... Oh, the fear of New Balance sneakers? I was I was wrong in the last Skechers. one. We weren't the fear of Skechers shape ups. So now we're in the last three. We were in the last four on the last one. Now we're in oh, the last wow. three. My bad. My bad. Okay. He has the fear of counting. <sighs> this one is a bit of a mouthful, <laughs> which is You're ironic. Used to that. Arachia buter uh, I'll never get this right if you can't say it. And that is the fear of arachia buter phobia. And that's the fear of peanut butter sticking to the roof of your mouth. It's a lot. There's a lot going it's true. on with this word. That I feel like I've read that, and that's true. 
It is, in fact, true. I left it in there just because I thought, like, what the fuck? I didn't realize that was a fear. Um, and it's it a is delicious fear. Arachibutrophobia Arachibuter- is what it's called, and it is very difficult to pronounce. I had to look it up several places, and I still might be saying it wrong. Uh, okay, second to last. I saved the last two. There are a couple of doozies. Uh, the second to last is homophobia. The fear of gay people. I feel like this is a trick question. I do too. I feel like there's a more professional name for it because I think homophobia, homophobia is, just is like so racism, like mainstream against gay people instead of. I I'm gonna say no, just cause. I'm gonna say it's. It's false. I'm gonna give it to both of you. Uh, I wrote. It's actually just called bigotry. <laughs> I mean, yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah, nice the... try, Anthony. <laughs> I know. I knew you both. I was like, that one. it's a hatred, it fun, not a fear. Um. Anyways, very last one. I saved the most appropriate for last. Here's pseudophobia: the fear of beards. That's an oddly scientific name, so I'm going to say it's true. I'm just going to say false, because sometimes whenever I question it, I go the opposite direction, so I lose. So, actually, Jay is correct. That is wow. not what I'm for. It is actually referred to as pagonophobia. Bonus points. Ten points. Pagonophobia. Because it's about beards and sundries. Okay. <laughs> 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 I'm not doing that, because I don't believe in that bullshit. Uh, um, yay. That's because he lost last time. So three a piece. Uh, Joe wins. I, I'll have to total it up, but Joe <laughs> definitely wins. Ooh. According to my scores, I got eleven. Uh one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. You did indeed get eleven. Yay! And, and what did I get? Eight? Uh Jay, you got Jay, you got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Yeah, you're right. So it wasn't that big of a spread. Good on both of you. I spread hey. lightly. Wow, you guys. Yeah, <laughs> sure. He doesn't spread at all. Top. He spreads like <laughs> that peanut butter on the top of your mouth. <laughs> oh, if you have arachibuterophobia. <laughs> oh, my God, I said it so right that time. Oh, yeah, finally. <laughs> I could have fucking got Damn. it right. No, I'm kidding. That's the one I did get right. Shut the fuck up. <laughs> you don't know anything about anything, Phobia. You're right. Anyways. I don't. Um, is there a fear of sundries? <laughs> no, but there is a fear of the music coming back on, and that's what oh, we're all no. experiencing now. <laughs> 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 but... If you don't have a fear of phones, go call our hotline real quick and leave a message for us to open next week's episode with. That number is 405-999-2242. And just like the automated keys on that piano, we are absolutely tickled that you are still with us. If you guys want to help us out, go and subscribe to our podcast so that you can get reminders every Sunday when we release a new episode. We also post frequent updates on our social medias for any additional sundries that we add to the market. And don't forget to rate us five out of six balls and leave us a review. Those reviews are what get us found by more listeners like you. Uh, We'd be honored if you could help us grow by doing that one small task. Just each one of you telling a friend about the podcast would double our growth. Make sure you're checking out our brand new webpage and scroll down to find our 50 state challenge. We're trying to find listeners from every state. If you see your state without a name on it, fill out that survey. Let us do who you are so we can mark it. We'd love to represent that state with your name. Let us do who you are. Ooh. If you already have your state with a name on it, you can still submit it and we will call you out on our next episode. And don't forget to check us out on Instagram, Facebook, TikTok, Twitter, comment. Oh, we're also on threads. We're pretty hip and cool. We were on it the day after it started. And comment, make suggestions, send us an email at beardsandsundries at gmail.com. We would love to hear from you. So... 
from all of us here at Beards and Sundries, make sure to love yourself and make sure you leave another voicemail because I think we need more. Because we already love you. Bye, Beardos. Bye. Bye.